part four of making a simple oscilloscope. Here is the circuit that I've made. I only at first want to show the schematic. It's here. For everyone interested. This is the complete schematic. It consists of an I of an oscillator. That oscillator drives a high voltage coil that's here. Here. Uh, the, on approximately 16 kilohertz or 18 kilohertz. Uh, and I've used this uh, coil by purpose because it was a special high voltage coil that was made for old school television. It worked on approximately 16 kilohertz. So I made an oscillator circuit to drive that coil here. And in fact, it's an A stable multi vibrator. Uh, these are the two very important capacitors for N7 that set the frequency where the whole circuit works. And well, then the, uh, here we have a high voltage AC of whatever waveform by the way and here it's rectified and here we have a negative voltage of 250 volts. This, these three 1 mega ohm uh, resistors form a certain uh, load to the uh, oscillating circuit. When there is no load here at all and that load could be a tube or whatever the tube, of course, has also a, say, a certain internal uh, resistance or an impedance, etc., etc. Uh, when there is no load, the frequency, sorry, the voltage can build up very high. So to say, give it a certain limitations, I've used here three resistors of one mega ohm. I will talk about this electrolytic capacitor later. Uh, frequency is set by the four and seven capacitors. This one and the other one. This one. Uh, current is limited by the help of a resistor of approximately 10 watt. When you don't use this resistor here, your transistors can burn out immediately when you make, say, uh, changes to the circuit, uh, do other experiments, etc. etc. Circuit works on 33 volts at 500, sorry, 200 milliampere. And well, that was more or less all to tell. Uh, I've used by purpose here two very, sorry, three simple, easy to find silicon diodes. They are all 1000 volts. They can handle 1000 volts. I've by, uh, by an experiment um, uh, used one of them or two or three of them. It didn't uh, have any effect on the output voltage and that's negative here. That's perhaps very important to tell. We have here say this oscilloscope tube and the the way that I've connected here this scope tube is not uh, say perfectly right compared to the data sheet. And when you study the data sheet or study the data sheets of other oscilloscope tubes with static deflection or electromagnetic deflection, it's always important that the first grid here 
is able to pinch off the electron beam going from the uh, cathode to the anode. And in this case, uh, this is that also works in a certain way, that way, but um, it could be that a negative voltage here, here, going from this electrode to here, uh, couldn't be, could not be uh, good enough to pinch off the electron beam. That means that uh, 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 we have here in fact two focus electrodes. So one electrode is a focus electrode normally and this is the normally the brightness electrode that has to be driven to the maximum maximum negative uh, voltage <coughs> sorry um, but in this in this case it works in a somewhat other way and it has at least as far as I could find out also to do with the uh, say not nominal voltage here that is connected to this tube this DG32 tube but it works properly and I want to show that so uh, it also means that when you do experiments with uh, oscilloscope tubes uh, uh, of course, look to the data sheet, but also uh, find your own way. Of course, uh, having seen all, say, the classical elect uh, electronic and electrical uh, laws. Uh, well, anyway, um, I want to show how this tube works and also show more about the properties etc etc uh, the filament voltage the emission of electrodes sorry electrodes electrons etc I've shown the schematic and we are now here of course in the dark uh, in a normal light situation perhaps this uh, say waveform uh, cannot be easily seen but anyway you can see, see here that the uh, the horizontal voltage now is good and it works on approximately 40 volts that's the output of my power supply. Here we, we have an AC output of 40 volts. So with 40 volts you can move the dot completely from, from the left to the right. That's good. Very good. And also the sensitivity is okay because we have here only 10 volts uh, to drive the vertical plates that's not bad of course it also gives hope for the future uh, when you want to make when I want to make a vertical amplifier that could be ma made in a more easy way when only say um, 10 volts or 40 volts or 60 volts is necessary to move the dot from uh, on the screen from vertical in the vertical uh, position. So that's other another good uh, uh, thing of this tube and this circuit. Um, well. Here perhaps it's interesting to see how, uh, how square wave 
can be driven into the plates, into the vertical plates. And of course all the face relations stay in a certain way the same. That's interesting. Very, very interesting. Back to the sine waves. This is the so-called Lisa U figure. When you are somewhat acquainted to electronics, you will you will surely know what this is and what this means. Shows the phase relations, etc. etc. Well, uh here is, by the way, here are, by the way, the two potentiometers that do the focus and that had to do the focus and the brightness. Uh, the strange thing is, and of course in a certain way logical, that I now do not have a brightness and a focus, but only two focus potentiometers. It's everything to do with the fact that only 250 volts is now added between the cathode and the anode. And, well, I did many experiments, by the way, to uh, make the brightness grid and the focus grid work properly, but anyway. Couldn't get it working. Perhaps uh, this tube was not for, say, a certain reason brought to uh, the dump market and the flea market. Though, in fact, I think it's completely healthy. But I don't want to go to too high anode cathode voltages. So, that also means that I don't want to get, I don't want to follow exactly the data sheet that was given uh, with this tube. Anyway, uh, interesting, that's, that's perhaps very interesting. The filament voltage is, has to be for has to be 6.3 volts and at approximately 300 milliampere. That also means that the dissipation, say uh, the electrons that are, the amount of electrons that are sent out from the cathode to the anode, uh, lifts up very, very substantially. So let's see what that can bring. I will now bring the filament voltage up to now 6 volts. Uh, it gets more bright, the tube gets more bright and the other effect is that I cannot get it to a proper very, very precise, precise focusing. Uh, that has everything to do, by the way, with the way that I'm using this tube now. Uh, well, more to come. Uh, and when you don't all want all the, this mass of a uh, say high voltage oscillator you can make this circuit in my opinion uh, with a voltage quadrupler driven with a uh, voltage an, an AC transformer on 50 Hertz or 60 Hertz um, and then get to four times the voltage that you have on the primary or sorry on the on the secondary of such a transformer so you can surely get to approximately four times um, 
50 volts or 4 times 60 or 70 volts with the help of simple diodes, a simple diode circuit, um, a simple diode diode quadrupler. So this is one way to do it. I wanted to make a circuit that was safe for everyone, but on the other hand, uh, well, it can be made in a more simple way. When you say no, how to uh, work with electronics and especially how to work with high voltages so that you are not shocked that say the the, the thing that uh, was most important for me prevent uh, all kinds of electric shocks when you want to make such a circuit and then I mean severe shocks so I hope this can help a little bit